Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be the first major project inside the house. So currently we are in the front sitting room, which we have been using as our in-home gym. And for this video, what I want to do is I want to convert this space to have a more gym-like atmosphere. All right, so step one of this project will be get everything out of the gym. And then I have wood floors in here and I need to protect them from any sort of paint getting on them. Um, there are four rooms in the house with wood floors and we have no intention of replacing them anytime soon. So I'm going to lay down some rosin paper and tape them tight to the trim to be able to protect the whole room from any sort of paint, especially when painting the ceiling because when I roll off the ceiling it's definitely going to throw paint all over the place. As you can see, I have the paper down on the floor to protect it, and I'm gonna be starting with TSPing the walls to get any of the dirt or oils off of them so that when I paint, I don't have any impurities or imperfections. Um, it is important to have some sort of barrier between your TSP and wood floors if you have them, because TSP is capable of staining them. So I might ruin the paper if it gets wet from the TSP dripping down onto it. That's no big deal. The paper will absorb it, won't get onto the floor, and I'll just replace the paper if necessary. But make sure you put something down if you don't want to have your floor stained. With the TSP done, I'm able to move into priming and I'm going to have to start with cutting in everywhere. And unfortunately, the entire downstairs has six inch baseboard and ceiling trim. So this is going to be a lot of uh, painting with a paintbrush and it's just going to take a while. And the hardest part of this room is going to be doing the windows and the windows above the door frame, the little decorative windows that they installed there. That's going to take the longest amount of time and be the most delicate paint work I have to do. You can see as I paint the trim that the ceiling is not white and I am going to be painting it. And you'll notice as I'm rolling primer onto the walls here that the original color is kind of still showing through quite a bit. So I am going to probably have to put a second coat of primer on when I'm done. But the ceiling I was able to get away with just a single coat of primer and it covered up the original paint pretty well. So thankfully I only had to do one coat there. Okay, so I got the first coat of primer on yesterday, but I think it needs a second one, so let's knock that out real fast. That was cool. Let's do that one more time. If only it were that easy. Once my final coat of paint is applied, I always wait a few days to allow it to dry before I put my outlet covers on. That way, if I ever have to remove them again, they're less likely to rip the paint off of the wall in the process. My next step of the project is very important for changing the atmosphere of the room. To do this, I'm going to install some triangular trim pieces 12 inches down from the bottom of the crown molding. Then I'm going to cover up these pieces with a more decorative crown molding over the top of them. And it's just going to butt right against the bottom of that triangular piece and then nail right into it. Now this is going to give a very similar visual look to what picture rail molding would look like on the wall. Only instead of being used to hang pictures off of, this is going to be used as a surface to mount some LED strip lights to. While I wait for the finished paint to dry and that trim I just installed, I'm going to work on a little side project, which is painting all of my dumbbells a hammered black from the Universal line from Rust-Oleum. As you can see, my pit bull doesn't care that we're filming a video right now. 
Now anytime you go to paint something, you always want to make sure the surface is clean. So for a dumbbell, go ahead and wash it down with some warm soapy water and then just rinse it off and dry it with a towel and you shouldn't have any rusting issues then. Now the rosin paper worked good for applying the first coat of paint, but when I went to turn them over, um, the paint would stick to the paper. So I would suggest putting some wax paper down underneath them for that side you just painted, or you can use cardboard. It's less likely to stick to it. It might still have a little bit of material that tears off, but you can usually, once it dries, simply rub it off with a wet towel. Because the dumbbells are a relatively smooth and flat surface, it's really better to do like two or three light coats of paint then try to do one heavy coat and get it all covered at once. If you spend just a little too long spraying an area, that paint will bunch up and start to run down the sides and it's gonna leave streak marks on your dumbbells. So while I wait for the dumbbells to dry, I'm gonna start painting the shelves that went on my metal racks. Now these allowed for me to have a solid surface on those metal wire racks. And I am going to be painting them black and I'm going to repaint the rack, which you can see as well. And that's going to be repainted with a shinier black. It's the same color I did my workbench with about a year ago. And if you haven't caught on, yes, my entire color scheme for all my gym equipment is going to be black essentially. So you may have noticed that my squat rack is not made of metal, it is wood and I built it myself about four years ago. I'm not going to get any more into it other than the fact I am repainting it for this video. Um, but if you are interested in it, then I will leave a link to the video in the description so that you can see the video that inspired me to make this one and check it out for yourself. Okay, now that the trim has had some time to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and put the LED string lights on and I'm putting them on the back portion of the trim so that they will not be visible from the ground. And the whole point of these is to be able to change the look of the room essentially whenever I want, just based off the lighting. Since the room was initially a formal sitting room, the room was meant to be lit by floor lamps and of course floor lamps in a gym don't mix because I need as much floor space as possible. So the one little tiny light on the ceiling is not gonna do enough to light up this room and it won't be able to do anything to change the atmosphere of the room. So with these lights, I'll be able to change the colors and it's just gonna make it very vibrant in here and very energetic, which is of course something I want in a gym setting. Now these lights, not only can they do your 16 million different colors, but they also are smart home capable. So they will talk to Google and Alexa and can be voice controlled and they can respond to your music. So they should be really fun to play around with here in the gym. Okay, so I now only have two major things left to do in the room. And the first one to do is to install this balance bar. And you can see that the brackets are black. They're the same color as the dumbbells. I painted them while doing the dumbbells and then I stained the bar. To install the bar, I need to make sure that the two end brackets go into a stud. And the easiest way to do that was to just put it into the studs that the outlets are on, which also happened to essentially center the bar on the wall. Now for the middle bracket, I simply uh, measured the distance between the two end brackets and then divided it in half to get the center line and then just put it right there. I also happen to hit a stud luckily enough, so all three of the brackets will end up hitting a stud. If the middle one hadn't hit it, then I would have just used a molly, but it would have been a little less secure, and luckily that wasn't the case. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up 34 inches from the floor to where I want the screw to go into. So this is not the height of the bar, the bar is going to be roughly 36 inches, but the bracket will be screwed in at 34 inches. Now once I get the left side on, I'm then going to level the bar and mark my other two holes. This will ensure that the bar is actually level, because if I just measured 34 inches for the other two holes, the bar may not have actually been level, because it could have been an uneven floor or a bad measurement, and this would have allowed for the bar to slightly droop on one end and then that would be very noticeable in the room. Before I screw the other two brackets into place I am going to drill a very small pilot hole to make sure that I am hitting the stud and I don't hit anything else in the process like maybe a drywall screw. Once I've determined that the pilot hole is good to go then I will go to the, the drill bit size that I need for the actual screw and then screw the two remaining brackets into place. With all three of these brackets screwed into a stud there's enough support that there won't be any issues with the bar trying to be pulled out of the wall by someone using the bar for balancing purposes for stretching.
The last major thing to do to the room is to install the mirrors. Now that the bar is up, and these mirrors are pretty cheap, you can pick them up from Walmart. But they're also very lightweight, which means I can simply install them using some brad nails. And I'm gonna put them up in groups of two, and I'm gonna have a half inch gap between them, and I want them at 72 inches high. So I'm gonna use my laser level to ensure that they're all the same height. And then I'm just using a little makeshift spacer to put the gap between them. So I put the mirror up, put it up against the spacer, ensure that it is at the proper height, and then just nail it in. And it just took six nails, two on each of the corners, and then two in the middle. And that's all that was necessary to hold them onto the wall. And they are very secure. guys so the gym is finally complete well mostly complete there are a couple pieces of equipment here that I want to paint so that they match the rack and the bench I just kind of want that black color scheme throughout the whole room and then I still need to do the drapes so once the drapes are up on the windows then I'll be able to close them block out most of the sunlight coming in so that while I'm in here working out I can turn on the LED lights in the room will really take on like the vibrant color of whatever the lights are rather than just the normal daylight color so hopefully that'll be a little more motivating while working out having the the really bright like reds or you know greens flashing and stuff um the room came out really well it just took a little longer than expected so it took me about a month to do and i was kind of hoping for more like two weeks but i am mostly a one-man show most of the time so in the grand scheme of things it's not a big deal and i like how it came out but the room kind of clashes now with the other uh, two rooms up front. So we've got the entry hall, which is rather large. And then we've got the um, what's going to be essentially a game room opposite of this room. It's basically the same exact room, just on the other side. And it doesn't really go together anymore. So it's kind of encouraged me that I want to just knock out both those rooms next. And so the whole front of the house will look the same. So stick around because hopefully in like another month or so I'll have those rooms complete and you'll see those makeovers as well but we got lots of other videos to come in the meantime and so if you guys like this video then go ahead and give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button and we'll see you next time on the DIY grunt.